Hey guys, this is uh, Shrini here and uh, these are Python basic tutorials and you're watching this on my channel Python for Microscopists on YouTube. And uh, again, these tutorials are for uh, basic to beginner programmers who are students, researchers, uh, or anyone who is interested in uh, image processing using Python. So in the last lecture, in the last tutorial, we actually looked at lists and towards the end, we try to multiply the list with uh, uh, number, let's say two, and then realize that multiplication of list uh, by an integer actually results in that list replicating, you know, or concatenating itself that many times. But for image processing, we need to actually multiply the values inside the list. So how are we going to uh, attack that? And uh, to do that, that's exactly why NumPy is uh, a great library to do these kind of tasks. But before jumping into NumPy, let's repeat uh, a couple of things that we, uh, what we have done in the previous lecture. Now, uh, as part of this, because NumPy, this lecture specific tutorial is very, very important for image processing. I really want to make sure I don't miss uh, any of the key uh, topics. So you will see me look towards the left on the other screen that I have here. And the reason why I have here is uh, I actually put a, a little bit of notes reminding myself, okay, don't forget to talk about these topics. And as you can see, there are a lot of topics that uh, we have to cover. So let's just uh, jump in. Let me move this out of the way. And let's exit out of this so we can see the IDE. Again, we are using Spider IDE. So uh, let's get back and define a list again. So just as a reminder to define a list, it is square brackets and you just type whatever the numbers you know you want in this list. And uh, now we have a list, a uh, one dimensional list uh, and that has a size of five. Now we realize that, okay, when we actually multiply A by two, it's actually giving us a result that is the same list put together a couple of times. This is not what we want. How do we multiply each number in this list, for example, by two, so I get, uh, you know, uh, so I get a list that is two times, you know, each value is two times here. So one way you can do that, actually, let's switch to the text mode so we can execute this. Let me go ahead and define this again. One, two, three, four, five, just to keep things simple. And now what do we want to do? Uh, so one way to do this, if uh, again, I'm not talking about NumPy yet, uh, but if you want to still work with list, how can we do that? Well, you can access individual number value inside a list and you can do math to it. And how do we do that? I actually intend on talking about uh, loops in my next uh, tutorial, but let's just start using a couple of elements from uh, loops like uh, you can say for uh, any, uh, let's just say for I in A, what this means is I'm defining a variable called I. So when I say for I in A, that means for every element, go through each element within this list, each entry within the list. So for I within this list A, now what do we want to do for I within this A list? I want to print I squared and the way we do square is two stars and right there. So all this does is goes through every, uh, well, I put uppercase I, lowercase I, it goes through every entry within this list and uh, squares it. So let's go ahead and execute this and you can see that uh, my result is 1, 4, 9, 16 and 25. Yeah, it's two times this. So this is one way of doing it, but again, uh, I'm not getting a list as a result, right? I mean, this is just individual numbers when I do this. So how can we actually get uh, a list as an output? So uh, we, we can do that by actually starting another list. I'm gonna call this uh, B or uh, let's just call this square, okay? And this is an empty list. So I just created an empty list that has uh, uh, that has nothing. Well, square square equals to an empty list. 
okay so I defined a variable called square and this equals to just nothing an empty list we need to populate this empty list so I, I'm still going to say for I in a meaning let's go through each element except instead of printing let's actually go and add remember in the previous lecture we looked at uh, appending to the list tuples you cannot change list you can change you can modify so I'm going to go through each element add uh, 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 you know uh, basically populate it so let's go ahead and say square if I can type it square dot append right so this is how we uh, populate this uh, the square and append it with what so I'm going to do I squared and uh, now so what this is going to do so now let me go ahead and type uh, let's print uh, square here so let's go ahead and run this and you'll see that okay the what it returned is the square of this again it's pretty easy to understand this code let's go through this line by line first a is a, a list that we defined and then we defined uh, a variable called square which is nothing but an empty list and now we are going to populate this empty list one at a time and we are going to populate that with the square of each of this entry here so square dot append and do i squared okay so for i in a for if uh, i equals to zero the value is one and then it does one square puts it inside the bracket yeah inside this uh, list and then it goes to the next one which is four and puts it inside uh, this empty and then it appends it and how, uh, how long does it do it does that until it reaches the end of this list which is 25 and that's what we got here well we can do this this is still three or four lines but this is still a bit of a pain right I mean typing typing this and in fact this is the long way of doing things uh, uh, in fact we can shorten this by using what they call uh, comprehension and again I'm looking at my notes I'm looking at my notes the next thing I want to do is how do we simplify this by using a comprehension okay comprehension is uh, let me move this out of the way again comprehension is uh, you'll see that I mean this is actually uh, shortening this whole thing so uh, in this case let's uh, let's just do a equals one two three four and square equals to let me delete everything that's the easiest way square equals to let's do i squared this is very similar to what we have done before except i'm um, defining it in a uh, different way so instead of fur and then within under the fur defining you know the 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 rule i'm just gonna define everything in one line so for square equals i squared and and we have to loop through uh, you know the each element so for i in a okay so for i in a and let's also uh, 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 let's actually print this let's not complicate it I almost complicated this let's actually print and let's say square and when I run this you'll see hopefully the, exactly the same result here okay so a equals to this and all of that for everything you know it's literally one line now square is i squared for i in a that's it so for each of this element just square this now when i thought about something for a second i wanted to actually uh, for example square this only for even numbers yeah so within this the advantage of comprehension is you can easily add if and else remember in the previous lecture we looked at one of the previous lectures we looked at if else conditions we can put that inside here so we can actually say only if it is an even number so square this only if it is an even number and how do you say something is an even number again uh, remember the mod oper uh, operator so if i divided by two or i mod two equals to zero what this means is when you divide i by 2 and if the remainder is 0 which is nothing but if i is an even number then do this so if we run this we should only see 4 and 16 because 2 and 4 right so let's actually add another number here 6 and we should now see 4 16 and 36 okay 
So this is uh, uh, again still using lists. So we can uh, we can we can uh, do our math and everything. But then, when we want to do this, when we want to do even more complicated math on images, which are nothing but uh, two-dimensional or n-dimensional uh, numbers, then it's much better if we uh, if we use NumPy library. So uh, in NumPy is uh, uh, in in NumPy, uh, you know a a NumPy array. They are called arrays. It's a grid of uh, values, and all values are same type. Remember, in the list we can have uh, type uh, uh, integer, float, uh, character, uh, you know, uh, uh, string, and so on. But in a NumPy array, all the values are of the same type, and the shape of an array is you can find out the shape is it uh, 5 by 6 you know if the image is 512 by 512 what is the shape of that 512 by 512 so you can find out the shape and the shape is uh, uh, given off as a tuple and i'll explain what that exactly means so let's go ahead and uh, start using numpy and for numpy we'll start by importing numpy right this is how we import libraries Let's define let's define a as one two three four five six. That's fine. Let's convert that into a NumPy array. So the way we do that is let's assign b equals to. Uh, in fact, it's tough to uh, type NumPy every time. So let's actually say import NumPy as np, which means I'm just abbreviating NumPy as np. I don't have to type entire NumPy. Okay, you'll see that in a second. So now I can do np dot instead of NumPy dot. Now I can do np dot. And again, it's prompting me with everything that I can do with NumPy. What do I want to do right now? So right now I want to define an array. So if I scroll down, you'll actually see uh, that there should be an array something uh, right here. NumPy dot array. And which one do I want to convert? A. Okay. So now let's actually remove these two. So my B is a NumPy array now. So let's go ahead and print, uh, print B. So let's run this. And now you see it looks just like, it looks just like a list. And uh, in fact, if you look at uh, the type of B here, it says int 32 and the size is six comma. What that means is that's a tuple. Before, when we look at the uh, looked at the list, the size is just a number, number six, integer six. Now this is a tuple. In fact, if you have a two-dimensional array, uh, let's say let's define anything, another one. C equals to one, two, three. Let's say, and uh, three, four, five. And now let's just do C, uh, B equals to NumPy array of C, and then print B. Let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see that this is nothing but we have defined a NumPy array, which is a uh, two-dimensional NumPy array. It's like a matrix, one, two, three, three, four, five, yeah? And what is C? Uh, I mean, uh, where, where, where is uh, B, yeah. Uh, and you can see the size is two comma three. This is a tuple. It's two by three. It has two rows and three columns. Okay. It's always rows first and columns next. You can see it right here. Two rows, one and two, and you have three columns, one, two, and three. Okay. So this is how uh, you can define a NumPy array. So let's go back to our one dimensional, just to keep things simple. And uh, now let's also look at uh, uh, I mean, we already looked at the type. If you want to know, you can actually type, uh, let's say, print type of B. So it actually prints exactly what the type is. It is a numpy.nd array. Okay. So we know that we converted a list into a uh, numpy array. Now, uh, let's. Uh, 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 We've already done a 2D array, so we, we looked at that. So let's actually, the reason why we started the whole thing is uh, to check out the math. So uh, let's actually do some math on this NumPy array. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and we converted that into a NumPy array. So now let's actually, uh, in fact, let's do it here. It probably makes it uh, a bit easier to understand. So A equals to 
one, two, three, four, five. Okay. This is nothing but a list, and a multiplied by two is just the list put together twice. So let's convert that a into numpy array. So let's import numpy as np. Okay. And then we say b equals np dot. Well, we are converting this into an array, array a. Okay, now b is our numpy array. Now let's do b multiplied by two. Now you can see that b multiplied by two is not this concatenation. This is actually multiplying every element in a, you know, one, two, three, four, five, every element in a by a value of two. This is, this is uh, now I can do b squared, for example. Oh, wrong b. b squared. You can see now this is 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. So if you want to play with the numbers inside the images, this is NumPy is probably uh, the best way to do that. And that's exactly why we are going through this, uh, this exercise. Uh, and uh, what other things? You can also generate arrays using uh, uh, built-in NumPy functions. For example, if you want to generate, uh, let's scroll this. If you want to generate an array, uh, a two-dimensional array of all zeros. We can actually do a equals uh, np dot z e r o s two comma two. I think this uh, does this generate. Um, I may have missed a bracket somewhere, so let's actually do this. I believe this is how it should be. Okay, so now np.02, when I type a, you can see this is a two by two matrix of all zeros. Uh, and uh, obviously this is, uh, you can do three by three, you can do n, any dimensions right there. So now when you do a, this is a three by three matrix of all zeros. Same thing, you can do all ones, I believe. Uh, let me see. Again, this is where referring to documentation is very important. Uh, I do not have the NumPy documentation right next to me, but there are so many things that you can do with NumPy. Go ahead and look at it. I'm just doing things that I kind of remember. Uh, NP.1s is uh, all ones right there, okay? So this is NP.1s, and uh, I believe you can also do uh, identity matrix, uh, uh, or you can fill the whole thing with uh, a specific number instead of all zeros, all ones. What if you want it to be all, uh, all uh, fives, for example? So uh, for that, you can just do uh, np dot uh, full and three, three. And right next to this, you can actually give a value of five. And uh, let's run this. And when you type A, you see this is, this is a matrix that has all fives in it. Why is this useful, uh, generating your own uh, matrix? Well, if you want, uh, if you want to run some sort of a uh, filter on top of your image, this can be your digital filter. Well, all zeros means, let's say you're converting all the values to zero, so you get a dark image. But sometimes uh, you can actually generate like a Gaussian filter this way. Uh, you can generate a random filter if you want. You can generate an identity uh, filter or matrix. So for example, if you want to do A equals to NP dot i and three this should be a three by three identity matrix so if i do a you can see it's one zero 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 one zero 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 one so this is one way of generating uh, a digital filter if you want uh, you can also do random for example a equals uh, uh, np dot random and uh, you can do Let's see what happens when we do this. Uh, module np.random. I believe it is random.random. .random. So let's try this one more time. Let's not waste if it doesn't work. Uh, we can look at the documentation later on. Oh, maybe it is this comma right there that's doing it. Oh, OK, this works. So let's actually look at this. So this is generating a random num a floating point number, which means between 0 to 1. And this is a 2 by 2 matrix. And again, you can do 3 by 3 matrix. So uh, these are uh, uh, a few uh, of the operations, I mean, a few of built-in uh, functions that you can use within NumPy. Now, let's look at, uh, let's, let's move ahead. What's the next topic? Uh, math, we did that, zeros, full identity, and uh, let me scroll here. Okay, let's look at slicing. 
this is very uh, this is also very important because when you take an image maybe we want to take like a subset of the image subset of those uh, pixels and do some sort of a math so let's define a an array again I keep using a uh, let's override that it's okay np dot array and uh, now let's define a uh, Let's define a, a, for slicing, it makes sense if we have a bigger matrix. So instead of two by two, let's actually do one, two, three, four, and uh, um, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight. And, uh, what else? Uh, nine, 10, 11, 12. And let's close this. I think I didn't make any mistakes. So yeah, so this is the matrix that we generated. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the array that we have generated, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, the reason I did this is now, let's understand this. So rows, one, two, three. There are three rows and four columns. So this is a three by four uh, array. Now, let's actually get, uh, let's actually uh, do something. B equals to A, what does this do? I just want to type in so we can see what this does. A2. So uh, what this is doing is it's it's the uh, same as typing B equals to A0. Two. So row 0, columns 2. So uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is going from uh, uh, the first two rows. I mean, when we define this, uh, sorry, I said row 0, column 2. This is, these are, this is nothing but print out the first two rows, okay, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this case, okay, and uh, uh, again, please experiment with this, it's not like, I mean, I keep, if I don't do this on a regular basis, I keep forgetting exactly what, uh, what the format is, so uh, let's actually type another B equals uh, A, uh, I believe you can do this, and uh, let's do that, so what did we just do? So 1, 2, 5, 6, 9, 10. 1, 2, 5, 6, 9, 10. So here, uh, all rows, but only the first two columns. So when I typed this, that actually means I want all rows. If you only use one column, that means you're defining only the rows. Yeah? So here I'm defining rows and columns. So all rows, 1, 2, 3, all of these three rows, print only the first two columns. 1. Uh, five nine two six ten okay uh, and uh, I mean you can uh, uh, keep playing with this uh, let's actually do first two let's take this matrix let's look at this let's uh, see if we can type out uh, let's say B equals a and uh, I want the first two rows and then I want one to three okay uh, so what this does is it should actually give me two three six seven two three six seven so again first two rows which is this row and this row but then columns one to three so this is nothing but zero column column number one two six and ten and column number two three seven and eleven and then do not include column number three it's going from one to three but then it's really one to two. This can be very confusing. And uh, when I started learning, this is, I still get confused about this terminology. It includes one, but it doesn't include uh, the third one. So this is exclusive right there. Uh, so, uh, so this is uh, what we call slicing. So you can extract a sub array from an array in, uh, uh, in NumPy. Now, uh, a better way of doing, I mean, you can also do, there's something called integer uh, uh, array indexing. What that means is, uh, let's keep working here. Uh, for example, let's define a new, uh, let's define a new uh, array here. So np dot array, and uh, let's do, uh, let's do, I'm basically thinking what's the best way to demonstrate this. One, two, okay. And then uh, let's do two by three. Yeah, one, two, and then uh, three, four. And if, uh, let's do five, six, one more. Makes it easy to demonstrate this, five, six. So again, let's look at this matrix. What we have done is 
created an array that kind of looks like this one two three four five six now uh, what we can do is uh, let's say if we want to extract uh, if we want to extract uh, uh, the first one right here and the second one here and the third one here so the way we can do there are a couple of ways and uh, one thing the way we can do this is np dot array and what do I want to extract right now so I'm actually picking what I want from that specific matrix uh, matrix so I want uh, a indexes so now I'm using indexes 0 comma 0 index so a 0 0 is nothing but the top left this is 0 0 row and 0 column so I want to print that and then I want to print a 1 comma 1 which is this value number 4 right so 0 1 0 1 so 1 1 is nothing but this 4 here again please practice this there is so much we can you know talk about it but when you when you actually experiment by changing these numbers uh, hopefully it makes sense to you and uh, the next one we want to do is uh, let's print out number five here so what would that be number five is uh, zero one two right so the row is number two and then the column is number zero so it's the zeroth column right there uh, so let's close this and let's close this and it should print one four five right one four and five so this is called indexing and again uh, if you keep using uh, more and more of this indexing you'll uh, you'll understand uh, you'll get better hang of this now let's get back to array math uh, after indexing I have uh, yeah let's do array math and then uh, uh, cover a couple other topics so I hope this is not way too much uh, material in one video go ahead pause and uh, uh, watch it uh, so we started with uh, you know uh, multiplying an array with uh, you know a value of two for example and then we did the square of uh, all the values within an array but now let's actually uh, generate a couple of arrays and see how we can add them so uh, I'm thinking whether maybe it's better if we can do that here x equals uh, let's say np dot array and by the way these examples you can find them online you know I basically looked uh, a few locations online and tried to see which ones actually work best you know as examples and I'm using a few I have a few other references I'm looking at a few books to see what the best examples are to talk about this and this is this is pretty much it so go ahead and search online and then uh, find the best resources so now I'm actually uh, let's uh, define an array uh, let's define a uh, two by two so let's do this one comma two and uh, let's uh, the other two numbers be three and four and we can also by the way inside here we can actually define what the data type uh, needs to be we typed our numbers but we can actually say data type uh, sorry data type equal to np dot I want this to be let's say floats uh, let's do 64 okay so this is my data type and let's do the same uh, let me go ahead and copy and paste and uh, let's do the same for y and let's change these numbers to 5 6 7 and 8 okay and let's keep the da data type to be now if you actually do print x plus y okay let's see what x plus y is going to be 6 8 10 12 in fact let's print x and print y so we can uh, uh, understand exactly what's going on print x let's print y and let's see so x is 1 2 3 4 y is 5 6 7 8 and x plus y is nothing but uh, the piecewise addition so 5 plus 1 is 6 6 plus 2 8 7 plus 3 so you have two matrices and we are actually adding like by like numbers here so this is again very very useful when we are doing uh, uh, when we are doing uh, math on images you know uh, arrays from images and you can uh, by the way instead of defining uh, instead of defining it uh, this way we could have actually done print np dot add x comma y yeah, this the result should be pretty much the same thing 
okay, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Uh, you can also do multiplication. So uh, NP instead of add, let's actually do multiply. And when you look at this, you got 5, 12, 21, 32. As you can imagine, this is nothing but you have two matrices and you're multiplying uh, the same number, like numbers. Z, uh, the number at the position 0, 0 in matrix 1 or uh, uh, array 1, same position in the other array. So here, 1 multiplied by 5, 2 multiplied by 6, 3 multiplied by 7, 4 by 8, and that's what we got here, okay? Uh, beware, if you are actually, uh, I believe in MATLAB, if you do this, you would get a matrix multiplication, not a true, uh, not a piecewise multiplication, but a matrix multiplication. In Python, this is just an element-wise multiplication, which is, I believe, more useful for uh, image uh, analysis. Now, in addition to this, you can do, uh, I mean, we tested, uh, let's say if you just want to sum uh, all the elements within, uh, within this uh, array, you can just do sum of x, uh, it returned a value of 10. So if you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, that will be 10. <clears throat> uh, so when you add these numbers, uh, it would be, sorry. Uh, and what other functions do we have? You can do sum of x, except, uh, except you can define exactly what axis. For example, you can just say axis equals to uh, 0 then if you run this, you see four and six. And as you can imagine, uh, what this actually did is uh, one, two, three, four, right? So one plus three and two plus four. So that's exactly what we got. Uh, and uh, again, you go ahead and play with this. Uh, what else uh, What else can be, uh, well, you can change the axis to zero, axis to one. Uh, in this case, when we do axis zero, it actually computes the sum of each column. When you do axis equals to one, it computes the sum of each row. Now, uh, one other useful thing that, uh, especially for image processing, is to transpose the matrix, if you, which is converting rows to columns and columns to rows. And uh, it's uh, basically as easy as uh, you just need to x dot uppercase t. This is transposing. So when I uh, print this, you'll see, well, let's print X also so we can see exactly what the original array is and what the transposed array is. The original array is 1, 2, 3, 4, and now you have 1, 3, 2, 4. Yeah? So the rows became columns, columns became rows. This can also be very useful for uh, image processing. Now, uh, th there is another, uh, when it comes to image processing, we may be working with uh, arrays of different sizes. So you can have one array and then a different array, and then uh, you want to add, for example, the same thing to, uh, I'm having difficulty explaining exactly what I mean, so let's go ahead and type here. So for example, if I have an array of A equals NP or X equals to NP dot uh, array, and uh, let's go ahead and define this. Uh, I should have just left the previous one. One, two, three, and uh, where is it? Come on. Uh, four, five, six, and uh, let's do a couple more. Uh, yeah, seven, eight, nine, and another 10, 11, 11 and 12. And do we have everything? Okay, so let's uh, define an array. Now let's add, for example, if I want to add b equals to np dot array, if I want to add, uh, let's say, uh, 2, 0, 2. Okay, uh, well, I made a mistake here. Okay, there it is. So that's my uh, array. So I want to add a plus b. Now, uh, Let's go ahead and see what happens. C equals A plus B, and uh, well, I should have just said print A plus B, but it doesn't matter. When I do A plus B, you can see that 202 is added to each of this. So this became 3, 2, 5, 3, 2, 5. The next one is 6, 5, 8, 
you see so this array got added to every row within this uh, specific uh, within this uh, uh, you know uh, array that that's a multi-dimensional there uh, so this is I uh, they, they call it broadcasting you know the broadcasting of numpy makes us uh, enables us to do these kind of operations otherwise you need to write a for loop uh, uh, saying that okay for i in range uh, you know for each element do this and this and this but uh, broadcasting makes our life easy so we can just add these uh, these two numbers uh, uh, without creating uh, an empty matrix and populating otherwise you can create an empty list uh, just like we did before and then uh, do the math one by one and populate it uh, so uh, I think this is uh, broadcasting is the last topic I have here now but I think uh, after all of this uh, it only makes sense for us to look at uh, open an image and look at uh, an image and do some uh, quick math so let's uh, I actually downloaded an image uh, right here let me move my uh, let me move my folders right there and here you can see test image.jpg let's open this image and look at the numpy array and do some uh, math to it right now okay that image is located in this folder pfm python files images my python file if i go back to file explorer my python file is right here so let's uh, import uh, numpy that's okay uh, and uh, let's uh, import numpy as np and uh, let's do read an image i'll talk about how to read images later on there are many ways to read uh, images but uh, let's just uh, let's just uh, use one of the libraries so to read an image uh, one of the libraries that we have is uh, scipy so i can import the entire scipy or i can import only the functions i need from scipy yeah uh, so from scipy i just want to import uh, I think it is within scipy.miscellaneous. Within scipy.miscellaneous import, I want to import uh, I am read. I want to import I am safe. I am read, I am safe, yeah? And now let's define an image. What is our image? Let's do I am read. I am read enables us to read an image. And uh, uh, let's see sorry for looking at my uh, watch that's the disadvantage of having a smartwatch every text and every notification you get you tell you get distracted so let's uh, focus back and let's end with this uh, reading an image and looking at an numpy array and doing some sort of a math so uh, i am read and where is my uh, image it's under images and it's called uh, test underscore image dot jpeg and this will make us uh, I mean this reads an image now once the image uh, is there let's go ahead and print image and see how it looks like and when we read this this is a numpy array so when I print this you see it, it's only printing like a uh, a little bit of this but you can see every number here corresponds to the intensity of every pixel within that image and uh, in fact what is the size of this uh, image if I do print what is the size of this numpy array if I print uh, uh, img dot, uh, let's do both data type, okay? And also let's print img dot shape. So this prints both the data type and the shape. So once it, let's see the data type is unsigned integer eight. That means two to the power of eight. It goes from zero to 255 number of values. It's unsigned. So there are no negative values. It goes from zero to 255. And the image shape here is 513 by 639 by 3. This 3 reflects the red, green, and blue. If it's a gray image, then it would be only 513 and 639. Again, we'll talk about this later on, but we actually loaded an image, which is nothing but a NumPy array, but, and we know that there are three channels. So let's uh, let's uh, do some image manipulation now. So what do we want to do? Uh, let's uh, add some tint. So uh, I'm gonna call this image tinted uh, equal to, and let's multiply our image by a matrix that has values of 
zero for red, zero for green, and let's just uh, let's just keep our blue. So what this does is it multiplies our image, our matrix with zero, zero, and one. So in a way, this kind of removes the red, green, and only gives us blue. And let's save this. Uh, I am save. There is a reason I brought this. I am save. So I am save in the same folder images slash and let's call this tinted dot jpeg and uh, uh, images tinted dot God, I should uh, images tinted dot jpeg and uh, which one image underscore tinted so save this image in this folder as image uh, tinted dot jpeg so if I open this folder hopefully we'll see a new image right there in a second so the it's done and let's open this uh, folder and there is a new image right here let's open this and uh, here is only the blue part and the original image looks like this where you have all red and blue so if you want to extract only the blue part which is the nuclei in this image then this is the best way this is the best way uh, to do this okay so in the next lecture let's actually continue uh, talking uh, about loops how to put these things in loops and everything so this is a long lecture and i hope you found this very uh, useful and thank you very much